Guys, recently I did a video about the story with Simon Pegg talking about J.J. Abrams' original plan for Ray's parentage. I got a ton of comments from people not understanding why legacy or lineage is a big deal at all. Why can't Ray come from nowhere? Why does she have to come from a Kenobi line or something famous like that? All of this stuff will make Star Wars smaller. I got comments like that and so many more. So in this video, I wanted to explain why lineage and legacy is so important to Star Wars in general. Let's talk about it. What's up, everybody? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. If you like Star Wars, subscribe to this channel. We do all sorts of coverage about Star Wars, especially on Star Wars Sunday. Now, like I said in the intro for this video, I'm going to be talking about legacy, why that matters for Star Wars, why that's a big deal for Star Wars fans. And before I do, I just want to preface this by saying, like, I'm not attacking anyone. You can feel whatever way you want to about Rey. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about what her current arc is on, if she does indeed seem to come from nowhere. I just want everyone to know, I think your opinion's valid. It's totally okay for us to have discussions like this, but I wanted to bring in like my perspective and why I think legacy matters so much in Star Wars. So Star Wars is modern mythology and in mythology, there are social hierarchies that play a large role. Most of these stories are about family conflicts or they have to do with kings or queens. And this is not meant to be taken literally. And I think a lot of us are missing the point. This is mythic storytelling. It's all meant to be an allegory for the human condition. None of this stuff is supposed to be taken literally. That's what a fairy tale is. It's a story that tells you a greater truth, but it's not reality. As an example, the object lesson in Romeo and Juliet is to not let old family feuds or family histories continue to rule the way you live your life. That Romeo and Juliet story is also meant to talk about young love and making rash decisions. And it's framed in this big family feud type thing and all of these generations that has all of this weight to it. But that's all just meant to give focus to the conflict, to give focus to the problems that the characters are dealing with. This is an example of social constraints and expectations that are built into every human out there. You're expected to do certain things. You're expected to act a certain way. This could have something to do with your family, with the community, with your friends, whatever. And even if you don't come from a royal family, you can still get the lesson from Romeo and Juliet. That's what these kind of mythological Shakespearean themes are about. The reason these stories in the past have dealt with princes, princesses, queens, and kings is because it's meant to give weight to the story. It's meant to be sensational and to grab your attention. And especially as a young person, these types of ideas give you like a clear reference the king and the villain, right? That sort of frames things for you. You can look at examples in other media like Krypton, which deals with houses, the belonging to a name, coming from a line, legacy, or Game of Thrones, which all has to do with the different houses, the bloodlines. I mean, everybody's secretly a Targaryen in Game of Thrones, and that's part of the fun of that world. Legacy matters in these types of hierarchical mythological stories. That is why it matters in Star Wars. For a long time, the whole story of Star Wars was about the legacy of one family, of the Skywalker line. And although we love characters like Han Solo and Chewbacca and Lando Calrissian and on and on and on, they are not the central focus of the story. They are not the thing that the story is about. And the allegories in the monomyth have more to do with the human condition and the struggles we all have to find our own identity and to deal with love than they have to do with being from a famous bloodline. After all, Skywalker wasn't really a powerful bloodline until Anakin was deemed the chosen one and later on became Darth Vader. Now I want to talk about another mythological story out there. This comes from the Lord of the Rings universe. Now in Lord of the Rings, Tolkien was 
particularly focused on this idea that a hero can come from nowhere. So even though it plays within a world of high fantasy, which does have legacy, which has different races, which has power struggles and different things like that, it also has a main character that's literally just a short little hobbit from the Shire where he just enjoys eating food and smoking the finest leaf in the Shire. So in that story specifically, Tolkien is trying to sort of post-modernize the mythology that has to do with Lord of the Rings and that high fantasy element. And I think it's pretty effective in that story, but Bilbo sort of becomes his own legacy. Frodo becomes his own legacy. And, and that sort of matriculates on throughout the stories in the future, throughout the ways people interact with each other. It's still its own thing. And so Frodo is sort of the unsuspecting hero that comes from nothing and yet is able to make the greatest change to, to do the thing that no one else could and destroy the ring. And so for right now, that's the kind of journey that Ray is on. Ray comes from nowhere and she's playing out this can you change your stars sort of motif. And if they indeed continue to go with that direction, the fact that she does come from nowhere, I'll be completely okay with it. But at the end of the day, her status in the galaxy will elevate itself to this heroic level. And then the legacy that she will leave behind will be tied to her name, to her possible family and progeny, and to the Jedi that she goes to teach. And so you see, either way, it ends up being about lineage and legacy. But I I wanted to address this because I personally love the idea of Rey being attached to the Kenobi line or to the Palpatine line and I saw a lot of people arguing against this in the comments which by the way is totally fine but I just I, look it's a part of the fun of Star Wars that's that's a whole part of the game man the fact that she's a Kenobi is very very cool if she ends up being one so I just wanted to make this video and sort of bring this to your attention because I got so many comments on that video yesterday talking about how you don't need her to be from anywhere, which, you know, that's fine. You don't. But at the same time, there's a whole litany of Star Wars fans that would love the idea of her actually having a legacy and having a place within the story itself. So whether or not J.J. ends up retconning the direction that Ryan took the story in and giving her a legacy or not, I'm going to be okay with it. I want to see where they go with this character. But I just wanted to sort of explain to people why legacy and lineage matters in Star Wars. At the end of the Day, even if Ray is no one, we will want to know about her legacy and her lineage in the future of this saga. It's just mythic storytelling. That's what we do with this kind of stuff. So I'd love to know your thoughts about this. I mean, do you see kind of where I am coming from? Are you still like, no way, no how? I definitely don't want any lineage and it'll make Star Wars smaller. Is this fan base ever going to be able to just get back to loving the thing that we love, which is Star Wars? Let me know your thoughts. I want to have a conversation with you guys about this. So yeah, hit me up on there. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit of a, of a bonus video wanted to get this kind of stuff off my chest. As I always say, I hope you are having an awesome and nerdy day and I will see you in the next video.